Hey, what's up guys? I'm going to compare these 4K streaming sticks to each other, starting from the newest to the oldest. So starting with the newest, we have the Roku Streaming Stick 4K, which came out last month, the Amazon Fire TV Stick 4K Max, which also came out last month, and Google's Chromecast with Google TV, which came out last year. So all of these are streaming sticks that support Netflix, Hulu, Disney+, Plus, HBO Max, Showtime, and a whole bunch of other apps, essentially making your TV into a smart TV. However, there are a few key differences. Starting with the Roku, it is missing YouTube TV, not to be confused by YouTube. It does have the YouTube app. However, the YouTube app may or may not disappear if Roku and Google don't come to an agreement. And the Roku also has something called the Roku channel, which gives you access to free movies and live TV with ads. Whereas with the Fire TV Stick and the Chromecast, they give you access to apps to also give you live TV. And the same is also true for the Roku. It has access to some of those apps as well. These all support 4K 60 frames per second. They're all quad core processors. They all have Wi-Fi capabilities. The Roku itself has Wi-Fi 5, so does the Chromecast whereas the Fire TV Stick 4K Max has Wi-Fi 6. So if the streaming sticks are close to the router, you should have no issues with lag, assuming your internet is fast enough, but the farther away you get, the Fire TV Stick will outperform the other two, assuming you have a capable or compatible router and mesh Wi-Fi that also supports Wi-Fi 6. And I've done a whole bunch of router and mesh Wi-Fi videos, I'll put links in the description below if you guys are interested in that. The other thing about Wi-Fi that's key with the Roku is it's actually built into the USB cable, which I personally don't think is a good design. And the reason for that is if something happens to this cable, which I understand the probability of that is low because you kind of tuck it away behind the TV. But if something were to happen to this cable, you can't essentially just get another USB to micro USB cable and replace it, you actually have to get one from Roku that has the Wi-Fi built inside, which I'm sure will also cost more money and harder to find rather than just picking up a generic one where you can do with the Fire TV stick and the Chromecast. So something to note, and again, this is micro USB cable, which again, you specifically need this one with the Roku, the Fire TV stick is also micro USB and the Google Chromecast is USB-C, essentially the new universal standard. So power controls your TV, turns it on and off. You have your home button, back button, your menu selection. This is the instant replay button. This is your voice search, which all three of these support voice search and they all work fairly well. This is your options button. When you select something, it gives you options. And you know, your dedicated play, pause, rewind, fast forward, your dedicated app buttons and your volume controls as well as mute. And if you're wondering, this Roku specifically does not have the headphone jack on the remote. So similar with the Fire TV stick, you have your voice search, which is powered by Alexa, your menu selection, your back home menu button or options button, dedicated play, pause, rewind, fast forward, mute, volume up, live TV and your dedicated app buttons. And I personally prefer this because the volume controls are here. I kind of like that over the volume controls on the side. And moving on to the Chromecast, just comparing these side by side, you do have your menu selection, your play, pause, and fast forward are built into this, which you can use this as well for that. But I just like the dedicated buttons you get with the Fire TV stick versus the Chromecast where you have to use this. Volume controls are on the side. Again, I prefer this just because it feels a bit more ergonomic to use this. And you have your Google Assistant voice search, back home, mute, de dedicated apps, power button for your TV. But the other cool thing about the Chromecast controller that the other two don't support is you can actually change your input source on your TV directly from this. And they all have apps on Android and iOS that you can also use to control your TV, which is also nice. Now moving on to storage, Roku specs are a bit hard to find online because they don't outright display what the storage space on this. A few people guessed one or two gigabytes. It's something I couldn't find uh, off a quick Google search that I did. I just couldn't. It's not really readily available. I checked Amazon. I checked Roku's website. I checked a few other places. Whereas the Fire TV Stick and the Chromecast, just generally speaking, the specs of these are out in the open, very easy to see. So both of these have eight gigabytes. And these two support Dolby Atmos, 
where the, this version of the Roku does not, but all three of these do, do support Dolby Vision and HDR10+. And for Bluetooth, the, this Roku does not support Bluetooth, where these two, the Fire TV Stick and the Chromecast, do support Bluetooth, which you can use to essentially stream, well, listen to the audio through your Bluetooth headphones while you're watching something, which is nice. And for cloud gaming, Roku does not have anything, whereas the Fire TV Stick has Amazon's Luna Cloud Gaming, and Google has their Stadia, which is their cloud gaming services. So both of these, you can play cloud games. The Roku, you cannot. And as far as theme changes to the user interface, Roku gives you the most customizability because you could change the backgrounds, you could put different themes and stuff. So, and it actually a pretty cool screen saver as well. Whereas with these, you're more limited to what you can do. Starting with the Roku interface, it's very clean and organized. It's very easy to see what you want to watch. So YouTube, or you want to go to Netflix or Disney Plus, whatever it is, you know, you go, you select it, and you're good to go. So if you open up Netflix, you know, you have access to all this other stuff. And even if you're on the main menu and you do a voice search, you could say, Naruto on Netflix. And it launches Netflix and it shows you Naruto, which is pretty awesome. And then you could go ahead and start watching this if you want to. And this is how smooth it is. So it's, it's not quite as fast as the other two, as you will see. The other thing is that the Roku has the Roku channel, which has a whole bunch of free stuff you can watch with ads. So there's free movies. There's also live TV. So even cool movies like, I mean, I like this movie, The Kickboxer where you could watch this, there are a few ads, but you know, you're good to go, full movie is there, and you also get live TV, which you can watch that as well, with the channel guide, all included for free. Okay, so, there's that, Disney Plus, a whole bunch of other stuff, you can also get other apps like Tubi, which also gives you free TV, and then there's Featured Free, which essentially categorizes stuff, and kind of gives you you know, movies and shows and other suggestions, and then they're based on different apps, like this is on Pluto TV, this one's on Roku Channel, and this one's also on Roku Channel. So essentially, you know, you can look through here, you can, again, search for stuff, and in my feed, you can select, you know, movies that you care about, well, you're interested in, that you want to watch, and you could select it, you could click on this and say, oh, follow this movie, and it will notify you when it's available. And then you have your movie store where you can watch a whole bunch of stuff. You can buy it from here. Or if you've already bought a movie, you could say something like Avatar. Or I could say Avatar on Prime Video, but I'm going to show you guys an example. So I actually bought this movie on Prime Video, whereas it gives me a few options and Prime Video being one of them. And it says, hey, you can rent this from $3.99. However, it doesn't actually know that I own this movie. So if I click on this, I will actually open up Prime Video and it will start playing the movie. It does take a bit of time to load. So then if, if I fast forward, just to guys, give you guys a sense of how fast this is when it comes to loading. And there we go. The other cool thing is if I go to settings, if I go to theme, I can actually change the wallpaper. And for instance, I like this panda one, so I can set this as the wallpaper and this is what the screen looks like. So there's a, there's a lot of customization and stuff. I can also move these around. So if I want Disney Plus, I go on this and then I click select move channel and then I could you know place it wherever I want and good to go. And you also get cool stuff like screensavers. So again, if I go to settings, theme, I can go to screensavers and I like this aquatic life. So I could, you know, set this and then preview this and boom. Jumping to the Fire TV, this interface is a lot more cluttered compared to the Roku. So everything is kind of jumbled in and everything is within Amazon's Prime Video essentially. I mean, you do get options from Netflix as well, so they do have suggestions from there as well, and you do have access to a whole bunch of other apps like YouTube, YouTube TV, and a whole bunch of other stuff as well, 
and this is the smoothness. So it's, it's fairly fast, I would say, generally speaking. So, and Alexa also works pretty well. So if I'm searching for stuff like Naruto on Netflix. Getting Naruto from Netflix. So it instantly basically took me here and showing me Netflix and I'm good to go. And it actually starts playing the video. Since I'm on Amazon and most of my videos I personally bought on Amazon, I really like Amazon's Fire TV Stick, but if I'm searching for a movie like Avatar, it's going to find it on Prime Video by default. So I don't even have to say Prime Video, it will actually go to Prime Video by default. And when I see this here, it just says resume and it already knows I bought it and I'm good to go. It will ask me for parental consent because I just set that option in, in the settings. And, and if I want to fast forward, it's really fast as you would expect it to be. And again, if I want to watch live TV, there is a dedicated live TV button which goes to IMDB TV and I get a guide and I can watch all this stuff and you know, whatever I want to watch, it's here. So I can also scroll down, recently used apps and go to Tubi TV. I can also say Tubi TV on Alexa and it'll actually show me. And again, this is another way of watching free stuff with ads if I want to watch it. So I just click skip, continue as guest, and I have access to all this stuff. Very similar to the Roku. And yeah, so that's pretty much it. And this is the live section. And I can also play games on Amazon's Luna. And finally, this is the Chromecast interface. So cleaner than Amazon's interface, but a little more cluttered compared to the Roku. But it's just really a different style. So as I go down, you know, you do have your options here and they're from different places. So this one's on Prime Video, this one's on Netflix. So it just categorizes by saying adventure shows or fantasy shows. And if you guys are wondering how smooth this is, it is butter. It's very, very smooth when you're scrolling. And that's also because there's less stuff to load compared to Amazon's. So it's very, very fast, as you would expect. It's, it's very, very fast. I really like how responsive the Chromecast is. It's also good at all of these. You can cast stuff from your phone as well. And this has the same type of thing where I say, watch Naruto on Netflix. And it should open up Netflix and it should start playing Naruto. So, you know, you're good to go. Came here. You can press play. It'll start loading it. You want to fast forward. Go ahead and fast forward. Press play. You can see how that's very, very fast, which is always a good thing. I really appreciate when things load fast and work fast. And the same thing with Prime Video. Now, here's the kicker. Avatar. Okay, so I bought Avatar on Amazon, but it's not showing me that as an option here. It's showing me Disney Plus, rent or buy, even though I bought it on Prime Video. So because I have the Chromecast, I have to say something like, watch Avatar on Prime Video. And when I say this sequence of words, then it will actually go to Prime Video and play the movie right where I left off, which is good. And then if I want to fast forward or, you know, go back or whatever I want to do, then I'm good to go. And it loads fairly quick. Three of souls. I will try Ramuno. So, you know, again, very responsive. You get your 2B, which is your free TV stuff, just like you did on the others. And here's the movie section. So they kind of categorize this stuff and based on the movie, it's on different places. Like this one's on Prime Video, this one's on Hulu, this one's on Netflix. So these are trending on Google. You know, these are adventure movies, again, in different places. And you know, it even shows you stuff on HBO Max. Now I don't have HBO Max, but you know, if I did, I could watch it from here. And the same type of thing for shows and apps. These are the apps and 
you do get options. You also get VLC, which Fire TV also has, which lets you stream stuff directly from your network hard drive. And it works fairly well for 1080p stuff, not so well for 4K stuff. It, it does get a bit laggy for some 4K stuff. And here's your library. So if you bought any movies on YouTube or Google, it will show up here. Like I bought Bloodsport and the Game Changers. So if I press play, I'll play those movies and I'm good to go. And you can also ask random stuff like, how tall is the tallest mountain in the world? Or I should have said, what's the tallest? tallest mountains include Mount Everest at 8,848.86 meters. So you can even ask random stuff like that. But in general, this is also a good interface. But it really comes down to which ecosystem are you in? And, you know, are you in Amazon's ecosystem? Are you in Google's ecosystem? Are you in neither? Do you like Roku? Do you have stuff on Vudu? So it really just depends on you. I personally prefer, I'm, I mean, it's a close tie between first and second place, but I think maybe the Fire TV Stick is probably my favorite because most of my stuff is on Amazon with Chromecast being a very close second and with Roku being third. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.